All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at IBM Think 2024. Look who I have with me, my very good friend, Win Vasist. Uh, it's such a pleasure to meet you in person, finally. Oh, I know. We've, we've known each other for years, yeah. and this is the first time we've been face to face. You bet, and uh, you know, and the, you know, and we just, I just realized actually that you've never been on the show as well, I guess, right? No, it was a we long were? time ago, but it wasn't live. Oh, it yes. It was not live. Not live, yep. right? So, exactly, this was my opportunity, which I didn't want to miss. And I know you have such interesting insights around data, AI, and I read, read your book recently. And Thank I was you. so impressed. Thank uh, you. So, thanks for sharing a signed copy with me. And yep. uh, I could, you know, read it forever. I suggested it to so many people. So thanks for doing that win. Uh, quickly for our audience, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us more about what do you do and uh, what are you doing at IBM Think? <laughs> I'm Vin Vashishta, founder of V Squared. I also run a company called HROI Certifications where we do training, education. So I'm doing a lot right. in the data and AI space, specifically now doing AI strategy right. consulting, helping companies figure out how to make money with AI, how to make money with data. Important. So, oh yeah, you know, some small things. And so that's why I'm here, trying to figure out where are companies making cash with this. I know where my clients are doing it, yeah. but it's nice to see, you know, the focus on scaling. It's nice to see the focus on getting out of the proof of concept and, you know, making money instead right. of just losing cash exactly. all the time. Yeah, we shouldn't be cost centers. You're right. In terms of, you know, a lot of startups or a lot of uh, even mid-sized companies, they're kind of struggling at the moment. But uh, there are so many interesting folks like you, again, if, you know, giving them some interesting advices. And I know a lot. So, uh, you know, thanks for sharing that, We Also, quickly wanted to, you know, jump uh, on, since we are here at IBM Think 2024, what do you think about uh, the keynotes, I know, I know, uh, you know, you were at all the keynotes, uh, and I just jumped right uh, besides you there. So, uh, can you tell us more about what's your impress impression about the space, and uh, how are you feeling? I mean, the conference is good overall. First day, the keynotes were amazing, but you can tell that there is there are two different focuses. There is a group that is super interested right. in. AI and hearing about AI and hearing about its potential. And then when you start talking about all the other stuff like AI governance and building data products and trying to get data for all of these things, right. all of a sudden it's like people getting up and I, they haven't figured it out yet. Like AI is not just this thing that happens. And that's, I mean, that's been my big takeaway from this is IBM's doing a good thing by explaining, look, it's not just this magical box that you open the box and money falls out. Right. You have to do the work. There's more to it. Exactly. No, I think uh, those are great insights uh, for sure, and I kind of uh, resonated with pretty uh, with it pretty well because it's like I've talked to a few customers here, a few clients a few in the community as well, and they kind of, you know, uh, have like similar sort of thoughts, so it's pretty interesting. Also quickly, since we are on this topic, I want to learn a little about, does anyone really understand what customers are doing with Gen AI? That's one of the important questions that I feel like there's a lot of talking, but who knows? You know, there's a lot of companies that are saying we've put it into production, we've put it into production, right. and here's like the broad use case. But there are very few companies who yeah. are saying these are the results that we're seeing. These are the, you know, sort of the numbers behind it. And you get these high level percentages, like, you know, we're handling 50% of our call center calls. And, and so you're kind of like, okay, but yeah. you know, I don't know, and satisfaction scores are rising. You're like, all right, so what else? What else is happening? What else are you doing with it? Are there creative use cases that you're thinking through? And it almost feels like those are being treated like intellectual property by companies. Right. Where one competitive advantage is we can actually put this into production, whereas most of, you know, the other people in our market, most of our competitors can't. So that's one advantage. The other one is, yeah, we're not going to tell you all the creative stuff that we're doing with it because you haven't even figured out that that's possible, sure. that that's a good use case. And I have a feeling like those sort of the ones that are kept back, the ones that are more confidential projects, I have a feeling those are where the real numbers, the real ROI are coming from. So I mean, I don't know when we start hearing those from inside of companies, but I know 
from the NDAs I sign with clients, oh, yeah, there are, sure. um, yeah, there are some trade secrets and there's some things that are being built that you just can't talk about. Love the secrets. At least, uh, you know, it kind of gives us a validation that the space is moving fast and there yep. are projects which are actually working out pretty well. Uh, so that's good information. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Win. Uh, also quickly, also wanted to learn a little about, you know, I always get a question where, uh, you know, a few enterprise leaders, they're like, is it a hype? Is Gen a hype? But uh, some enterprise leaders are pretty confident because they have been, you know, actually implementing it. So what are your thoughts about, uh, you know, the momentum and pragmatic applications? Is it going to, like, keep AI going after the hype or the bubble burst? Well, I think we're definitely in a bubble, and I think the hype cycle has to come to an end at some point. Right. And it's going to be, all right, do we have real results? Do we have anything that we can point at and say, this. this is how much money this is making companies. This is how much money this is saving companies. But you're slowly seeing the hyperscalers say, you know, double digit cloud growth. So, okay, that's, that's phase one. We know NVIDIA's got all those chips. Yes. We know the hyperscalers are making cash. We know that they're seeing growth in cloud from this. Okay. So people got chips, they're using chips. What are they, you know, so that's, ne you know, sort of the next piece. And that's oh, kind of wow. one of the yeah. things I like about IBM is because they're, they're starting to say, look, we're the acceleration layer. So you got the foundational layer, you got the hyperscalers, that's in one side. And then you have us in the middle. Mm -hmm. And instead of just making it possible, we're making it pragmatic. We're pragmatic. making it something that most, you know, enterprises can do uh, with low cost, ease, that's kind of their message is we can do this middle layer, the acceleration layer, so you can get to uh, that bag of cash it faster. It is very important, right? Yep. Exactly. Someone has to, you know, talk about the real things. Right. If IBM is doing it, it is happening for sure. Right. Uh, thanks for sharing that. But once I kind of wonder, once the Gen AI hype is over, what's next? What do you think? Uh, it's robotics. I mean, there are so many people talking about robotics, but it hasn't really gained a lot of traction mm -hmm. the next foundational models will be robotics oh, wow. and they will support robotics uh, you know as sort of a hardware platform we need something from an ai platform perspective that will support these robotics we've never had that before where there was sort of this centralized technology which could enable robotics to do so much more than they can now and so if you combine sort of a new type of foundational model with Gen AI, now you have an interface in Gen AI and you sort of have an, a robotics operating system right. in this new foundational model. And it's you put those up. two together, that's the next big wave. And so you've seen sort of Gen AI take over, you know, we say it's targeting a lot of white collar jobs and it's targeting a lot of that sort of labor. Robotics will be the Gen AI for the physical world. And you're wow. going to start seeing this interesting crossover between augmented reality and robotics where you have to get the training data from robotics somewhere. And if you have AR enabled technology on your mm -hmm. factory floor or, you know, really wherever yeah. people are doing physical work, labor, then you have access to gathering data that could be used to train those robotics foundational models. So we have a really interesting time coming up in front of us. Okay, so I'm pretty sure after listening to this, my audience would be like, oh, is it gonna replace jobs? That's well, one thing, one question which will definitely rise up. What do you think? I mean, my classes, I talk about a different sort of paradigm to the way yeah. that we think about human machine interaction. And it's part of my AI design because I think we need to design AI products differently than we design digital products because people work with models, they work with AI in a different way than they work with digital software. So yeah. we have to have a new design paradigm for it. And when it comes to looking at, do we replace jobs? You're going to make one person much more productive. And so the real question is, is there a backlog of work? And if you look at construction workers, yes, so massive backlog yeah. of work. Yeah. If you look at trades like electricians and carpenters and roofers, right. backlog of work. I mean, where I live right now, trying to get somebody to redo, you know, just paint a house. It's a month it's waiting a list or a, yeah. you know, a two week waiting list. Trying to get a home built or a subdivision built 
you're looking at sometimes over a year of a backlog. So when you think about it, okay, so now people are going to be more productive and this backlog of work that we... will be a good balance. We'll exactly, find the balance. Exactly. Oh, wow. I don't know that we're going to lose a lot of jobs, and you know, especially in labor. That's the interesting thing. In the white collar world, I think we're going to have a lot of companies that make the mistake and let people go too soon and then realize, uh-oh, no, I, I, oh, I needed wow. them. I've got this yes. backlog of work. Yes. We could have used Gen AI to create new opportunities, new opportunities, new revenue, new work. We need these people. Love and instead, it. they're just going cost cutting. But, but in the physical labor world, I don't think they have the same sort of perception where they realize, no, there's a massive backlog. Yeah, exactly. No, I love it. I love all the insights that you've shared. Quick question, since we are here at the conference. So I know a lot of influencers attend the conference. How is it? Is it cool to, for the influencers to attend? How is it, you know, what do you think? Like, what's your thoughts? I mean, it's work. It, it's it's a it's a job. Job. Right? <laughs> it is a job. Yes. And it's harder than you think to create all of the content and figure out, okay, how do I distill this message down into something that's consumable and what gaps am I filling? Because IBM does a great job of marketing, but the whole goal of being an influencer is to fill in gaps True. and to amplify messages. So, I mean, it's cool, but at the same time, it's work. And a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, not 100% glamorous. Yes. Oh, I love it. And you're right. It's more like a job, but at the same time, it's also, you know, there's so much responsibility sometimes that you kind of feel that, okay, everything's been announced, everything's out there, but what are the things that are missing? How yep. can we fill those pieces? So it's always interesting for the audience as well. And. Uh, I know our audience would have more questions um, and they would want to reach out to you. They would want to learn about your course, your book. Yep. So can you tell us where they can reach out? Which are the new courses that are coming up? Which are the existing courses they can take up? And also about the book a little bit. A little I, bit about I, the book. I'm pretty yeah. gonna, I'm gonna share all the links with our audience, but just want to learn from you. So easiest way to get a hold of me or reach me or find out everything about me is datascience.vin. Thank you to the French wine industry for naming a domain after me. <laughs> Thank you. So that has everything about courses. Right now, we've got an AI product management course, an AI strategist course. Both of those are certifications. So you leave ready to do the job, which is kind of important, right? Yeah. You also have some self-paced courses that you can take online, everything from leadership to product to strategy. Very we'll be rolling out a few. I haven't really Can't announced wait. those Can't yet. Wait. Yes. So there'll be a few new ones coming out uh, later next month and all the way through the rest of the year. Nice. The book is called From Data to Profit. It's all about exactly that. How profit. do you go from data to, to machine learning, to data science, to AI, to cash? And not just internal, you know, those those cost savings initiatives. How do you make money with this stuff? It's one of the best books. Uh, I can say that. So, Thank you so I mean, much. Uh, I know the efforts that you've put into it, and obviously it's also the experiences that you've had. Yep. It's not only just about, you know, okay, now we are in the Gen AI world, but it's the years of experience that you've kind of also implemented in the book, and uh, from data to money is a long way. So, but you've put it into a <laughs> book in a very easy to understand but at the same time there are complex things yep. that are mentioned too so uh thanks for doing that but uh it was again such a pleasure hosting you Thank on the Robert so show much. thanks for doing it yep. and uh i'll see you around definitely awesome thank you very right. much everyone